So are you thinking about starting a podcast? Well, I've got some numbers for you. 850,000 podcasts in existence to this day. And of that, there are 3.6 million episodes to choose from out in the atmosphere. Now, you may ask yourself, is it even worth it to start a podcast with staggering numbers like that that you're going to have to compete against? Well, if your answer is yes, then stick around because in this video, we're going to talk about some of the basic equipment needs that you, you're going to have to start a podcast. We're going to talk about audio recording software, and we're going to talk about hosting platforms to put your podcast out there for the world to hear. So with 850,000 podcasts in existence and 3 million downloads, I mean, that seems a pretty daunting hill to have to climb if you're just starting out and wanting to get a podcast off the ground. Now, there are plenty of reasons for starting a podcast. Maybe you're a, a teacher and you've got something you want to share, or maybe you've got great ideas or you just like to talk. You know, maybe you just want to get on there and entertain people. That's, that's the purpose of the podcast, to entertain people where they don't have to really interact with it. They can just listen. Now, when I started my podcast in 2019, I didn't know what to do. I was, I was really lost uh, trying to figure everything out. And even though I read as much as I possibly could, watched a lot of YouTube videos, this, that, and the other, a lot of those actually centered on the gear side of it. They didn't really address the fundamentals of starting a podcast. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of the fundamentals that are important to keep you from burning out and to give you more longevity as you make this journey into podcasting. So we're going to go down to my studio and I'm going to show you some of the equipment I have and I'm going to show you some of the recording software that I use, but we're really going to focus on the fundamentals here. We're going to focus on the groundwork, what's important starting out and why you should focus on these more so than what gear to buy. So let's go down to my studio and check that out. Okay, so we're back in my studio away from the leaf blower that was going on across the road out there. but. Like I was saying earlier, with 850,000 podcasts in existence and 3.6 million downloads and episodes to choose from, you know, that's a really big task to actually think about starting a podcast. But if you're going to and you're dead set on getting into this, into this medium, then my first thing is very fundamental that I'm going to share with you. What you need to do is establish first and foremost before you even press record on any piece of equipment is what your podcast is going to be about. What is your topic going to center on? That's going to be key to longevity in your podcast. And, and what I'm saying by that is this. Are you into politics? Are you into religion? Are you into entertainment news, world events, current events, world history? All of those things that you may be interested in is what you really need to consider when you're starting out uh, to record episodes. And the reason you need to make it something that you're really interested in and passionate about is because it saves you from burnout later. You're going to get to a point if you're recording what everybody else does, even though you may not like it, you're going to get to a point at some time where you're going to go, I just don't want to record anymore. I don't really want to talk about that subject. So make it personal. Make it your own. Make it something that you, you have fun recording week in, week out, month in, month out, however often you're going to post episodes. So now that you've got that out of the way and you know what your podcast is going to be about, the next thing is going to be, are you going to be a single person recording, editing, uh, doing all the work in the podcast, or are you going to have a co-host? Now a co-host, I do like co-hosted podcasts. I like the way they sound. I like the banter going back and forth between, you know, each person that's, that's actually on the episodes. That can make for some really good conversations and some really funny situations as well. Uh, and also with a co-hosted podcast, you're going to have the ability to share responsibilities within that group. Who's going to be responsible for the editing? Who's going to be responsible for uh, the recording setups? Who's going to be responsible for each and every little building block that's going to go into your podcast episodes? So once you've got that out of the way, and once you've established what it's going to be about, how it's going to be done, single or co-hosted, the next thing's going to be what equipment you need. Now, let me say this about equipment. It doesn't have to be the latest and greatest, flashiest thing, newest toy on the market. That's where a lot of people get confused. They think, well, I've got to buy a $500 microphone. I've got to buy a $1,000 mixing board. But when you get to a certain point, you're going to really want to invest in some quality equipment. Uh, I go the inexpensive route, but I do a lot of research and I do a lot of reading about different microphones, different audio recorders, 
And my software that I use to edit my podcast is actually free. And we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. But microphones are subjective, but it's going to be one of the key elements that you're going to need. Uh, you can get adapters for your cell phone to actually uh, run a microphone into your cell phone and record the audio that way. Those kind of microphones are these. These are USB microphones. Now, this one is a toner gaming microphone that I actually started with whenever I started doing live streams and when I started recording podcast episodes. And this served me well for its purpose. This actually did a really good job to capture my voice, get it into the software so I was able to edit and you know do all of the things I needed to do to actually turn it into a podcast episode. So you can't go wrong starting out with this. Now, I recommend starting out inexpensively. And the reason I do is because you may get into it and start recording and start going through all of the, all of the steps to do what you need to do. And you may determine that I just don't want to do that. It's just too much work and I'm really not that into it. So don't buy the most expensive thing that you can get your hands on. Go inexpensive, test the waters, get your feet wet, set some foundational things, try out podcasting before you make commitments into going into the most expensive. Again, a USB microphone is a very good option for that. So let's say you're into it and you really enjoy making the podcast. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is up, up your microphone, you know, step up and upgrade your microphone. Some of those that I can tell you about are this. This is the Behringer BA85A. This is a dynamic microphone, and I've used this microphone a lot. And then I have its little brother. I have the Behringer XM8500 Ultra Voice. Now, both of these mics are dynamic microphones, um, and you're going to need some equipment to go with it, so we're going to get to that. But these are great mics. They're inexpensive. They are very inexpensive. You can get these on Amazon for about this one goes for about $26, $27 now. This one used to go for $19.99. Now it actually goes for $23. But again, both of these are great options when you're starting out. Uh, now you may think, well, those are cheap. Those are, you know, how good can they actually sound? Well, they actually sound really good. Uh, there's some things that you can do to these microphones and I'll, I'll briefly discuss that in just a moment. There's some, you know, these sound really good. Now for my voice, they give a more of a deep, boomy kind of sound, which is what I like. That's what I like to hear when I record. Uh, that's my sound. My wife says it's a Casey Kasem sound. I don't know what that means. But these microphones will do the job. And because of their price structure, being inexpensive as they are, you can buy a lot of these if you're going to have a co-hosted podcast. Now, there are better options. There are more expensive options. Of course, there's always something bigger, better, and flashier that you can actually buy to uh, record audio with. But if you're just starting out, this is a very good option to choose. I cannot recommend these enough. They've served me well. I've recorded a lot of episodes with these, and I'm always pleased with the way they sound. Now, next up, if you're wanting to really step up your microphone and you're really wanting to spend some money, you can go into the $100 range and you can buy one of these. This is an Audio-Technica AT2020. Now, the thing about this mic is it is a condenser microphone. But again, it's a great quality mic, not very expensive. You can get into uh, not so much pain on the wallet. Um, and then when you get to using these, you'll see the difference, or you actually you won't see the difference. You'll hear the difference between the sound quality in this and a dynamic mic. Is there really a better option here? Not really. It just depends on what your preference is. This dynamic does not require 48 volts phantom power. This condenser microphone does. So if you're going to use a condenser mic, you're going to really need something that's going to be able to provide phantom power. Um, now, there are plenty of options out there. There are plenty of inexpensive options out there that you can pick up and use for these type microphones. Now, I like the condenser microphone. The thing about it, though, remember this. These are going to pick up a lot of ambient noise. They just are by the nature of how they're designed. These are designed more for uh, soundproof studio work or sound booths, places that are going to isolate all of the outside noise as to where a dynamic mic is going to reject a lot of the side and rear noise and actually just capture your audio here right in, right in front of the microphone. So keep that in mind whenever you're pricing microphones. Now the mic that I use uh, to record all my episodes and I used to use it a lot for my live streams is my Rode Pod mic. Now again, I'm buying more and more equipment as I go along, but the reason I'm doing that is because I'm into this 
uh, so much that I really enjoy doing it. So it's nothing for me to start investing money and to start investing into uh, some different equipment as I go along. So now let's talk about what we're going to need if we're going to use a condenser or a dynamic microphone to actually get that audio from the mic into the computer. Okay, so you've made the decision to either pick up a dynamic or a condenser microphone. Now, how are you going to get that audio from the mic into your computer? Very simply, what you're going to need is an audio interface. You're going to need something like this. This is the Behringer UM, Euphoria UM2. Now, this is an inexpensive model from Behringer, uh, and this is actually a great little model, and I've used this for live streams, recording audio for my podcast, and some different things that I've done for video work as well. The cool thing about these is they run about 50, 60 bucks on Amazon. You can pick them up at other retailers as well. Uh, they have an XLR and a line input, and then they have an instrument input, meaning you can record a guitar, bass, or whatever other instrument uses a line out to you go into this. It also has a headphone amp out for monitoring your audio as it's recording. Now, the thing about this, like I said before, if you're going to use this with a condenser mic, this has a 48 volt phantom power switch on the back, which you can actually switch on and off. You don't want to use the phantom power with your dynamic mics, but you do with your condensers. So remember that has a on off switch for the phantom power. So if you ever plug in your condenser to one of these and you don't hear the audio, check to make sure the switch is on. It says also a USB out. This is key. This is how you're going to get the audio from the mic to the computer. Through this USB cable, it's just plug and play plug it in, download the drivers, and you're ready to go. You can start recording with whatever software you may have. Now there's a little setup and a little tweaking you're gonna have to do, but that's really, I mean, that's the easy part of this. On the top here, you see that you've got a mic gain, you've got an instrument gain, and then you've got the output. The output is how much sound is gonna come from um, the audio interface into the computer. I set it all the way up, that's just the way this is. Plus, whenever you're monitoring your audio here, uh, turn it up so you can hear what you're recording. And that, that can be a little, um, a little kind of weird sometimes whenever you're uh, recording audio, listening to your voice and hearing your voice, and you're going to be like, God, do I sound like that? It's going to take you a while to get used to how you sound once you start recording. So remember that. Now, one other piece of equipment that you may need for recording your podcast episodes may be a field recorder or a pocket recorder. Uh, and the reason you may need one of those is because you may want to get some sound reinforcement when you're recording your episodes, or maybe you do an interview type podcast where you're out and about talking to people that you may meet on the street. Now, you can spend a lot of money on field recorders, or you can buy something that you know works good for you to just, really you're just trying to capture the audio. That's all you're trying to do. One that I use exclusively, and I've used it for a couple of years now, is this, the Zoom H4M Pro. Now, you don't have to buy a Zoom recorder. These are 200 bucks um, at any retailer, really. You don't have to buy one of these, and there are so many different makes and models of recorders out there today. Pick up something that's easy on your wallet that will record your audio. Now, the cool thing I like about the Zoom recorder is that it, everything records to a USB uh, card. That means you are not a USB, I'm sorry, a micro SD card. So you can record all of your audio, uh, take this from here into your computer and edit it that way through your software. Uh, these work really well and they give you a lot of options. The reason I like the Zoom so much is because of all of the recording options that I have. You can record from the built-in microphones, which are great for noises and different things in the environment that you may be in recording for your episodes. They also offer two XLRs and two line ins here, uh, and they offer a microphone in on the back here as well. Now, why that's important is you may want to use a lavalier mic like I'm using right now to record your audio, and this gives you the option to do that. So again, the Zoom Field Recorder for me, or the H4M Pro, is really a good option, and it's something that I determined that I needed as I was re recording more and more episodes, and I needed to be able to set up either a mobile recording or move away from my recording desk. So again, you don't have to buy a Zoom, but pick up something that's easy on your wallet that's going to record. Again, there's plenty of options out there. Just decide on something that works for you and stick with it. So now you've seen microphones, you've seen um, you know, some of the recording uh, equipment that you're going to need to get the audio from the microphones to your computer or from your microphone to your recorder. 
or you, you've seen cables. Now we're going to talk about software. Software is one of those things that you can invest a lot of money in. Software is, um, you know, there's so many options out there. I tend to use a free program called Audacity, and I'm going to show you what that is next. I love Audacity not only because it's free, but because it gives me all of the tools that I need to actually record and edit any audio that I've recorded. Of course, you can spend a lot of money. You can get Adobe Audition. I know a lot of people talk about how great that is. Um, I, for one, am not going to pay a subscription price for that. And again, if you're just starting out, start with something that's inexpensive or, in this case, free. That way you can really get your feet wet and determine, is this something that I really want to keep doing? So now we're going to switch from here. We're going to go over to my recording desk. And I'm going to show you Audacity and go through it kind of quick to show you just how easy it is to record with Audacity. And then we're going to close out this video. And while we're here and talking about this, if you've got questions about podcasting, please post them in the comment section below. I always respond to the comments. Um, let me know what you think about this video as well. And if you do like what you see and you do enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notifications bell. That way, when I post future content or go live, you get the notification. You can come in and join me or check out the video that's posted. So let's go over to the recording desk and let me show you Audacity and I'll give you a quick little tutorial in that. Okay, so now I'm going to do my <laughs> recording with Audacity to show you how Audacity works. Now you may be asking yourself, what is hanging on his wall? These are the quilts that I use to actually stop sound from bouncing around the room uh, whenever I'm recording audio. Now you can do sound absorption panels. Those are, you really got to put some time into building those and getting the insulation and the fabric to cover them. This was a very inexpensive option for me and it works really well. Now you can hear the difference. Now I'm talking outside of this recording space and you can hear the audio echo, if you will, or you can hear the reverb bouncing off the walls from the open area. But if you turn into this area here, what you hear is that sound is a little bit quieter. You're not getting all of that reverb and all of that bounce. It's coming, it's just being absorbed by the quilts that I have hanging on the wall. Now these are not pretty. I get that, I understand that. My wife hates them. But for me, they work well, and this is my recording space, so this is what I've got as my sound absorption option. So now let's jump into Audacity, and I'm going to show you how to set up a track, how to record, do a quick edit, and add some effects to it. So to give you a good, it'll give you a basic understanding of how Audacity works. Now, really, Audacity is a free program. You're going to have to dive in there and actually... Uh, uh, once you download it, get it installed, you're going to have to play around with it, play around with some of the settings, set up your microphone, set up your, your output, whether it's going to be headphones or speakers. So again, you're really going to have to tweak it a little bit. But again, once you do and once you, you know, explore it a little and understand it better, it, it, it's actually a really good recording program, especially if you're just starting out. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So now I have Audacity opened up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a track. Now, adding a track is very simple in Audacity. Go to Tracks, Add New, and you want to add a mono track for your vocals. Your vocals are always going to be recorded in mono, but they will output in stereo. So now that we've got our track selected, we're just going to hit Record. Very simple setup here. You can use, this is your con control buttons here. You've got Record, Fast Forward, Rewind, Play, Pause, and of course, Stop. So let's go ahead and record a sample audio. Hey, welcome to the Bearded Guy Podcast. Thanks for coming by today. Now, today we're going to be talking about Area 51, that lonely place in the desert surrounded by secrecy and guarded by the U.S. government. So now that you've got your audio track recorded, now you want to add some effects to it. Very simple to add effects. All you do is highlight it, go to your effects. Now, the only effects that I use in my vocal channel is, of course, bass and treble because I like to get a little bit more presence in that. Plus, it'll help you adjust your, um, your, your output volume here at this output volume tab. I always set it to zero decibels because you don't really want to peak and blow out the audio because if you do, it's going to be unusable and you're going to have to go back and record it. Bass, I always set it to. Treble, I set it for. This is going to vary depending on your voice and your speaking style and what sounds good to your ear. So I want to go ahead and start playback. Hey, welcome to the Bearded Gal Podcast. Thanks for coming by today. Now, today we're going to be talking about Area 51, that lonely... So you can tell by the the automatic change that gives you a preview of what the bass and treble is going to sound like. Of course, you could change that. Up here at the top, you notice the VU meter is going off. And the reason those are important because it shows you about where you are whenever you're recording your audio. 
I always stay between negative 12, negative six, and I get a little bit close to the zero, but I never go above and beyond that because again, I don't want my audio to be clipping and staticky whenever I actually do my final edit and export. So click apply on your effect and then close. Now you've added the bass and treble to your, um, to your basic audio track and you're ready to go. So if you want to start recording again, start recording and it'll pick up where you left off. And again, you can add your bass and treble to that or whatever effects that you may be using um, for your audio track. Let me put that on there. But you want to remember, uh, make sure you go through and edit uh, your audio as you're recording. You want to make sure that all the effects are right. All the sound levels are about the same. And you're going to have some peaks and some lows in there. But, I mean, that's just normal speaking. Everybody's going to have that. One other thing I want to show you too is I want to import some audio that I'm going to use for a music bed. Now, I use music by Joseph McDade because he puts out free music to use for whatever project you may have going on. And he also has a Patreon site, so please go support him. Uh, check him out, josephmcdade.com. One of my favorite songs by him is Mirrors. So I'm going to go ahead and click this track and I'm going to click open and that's going to import it automatically into Audacity. Now, you're going to notice something here. Hang on tell how loud that audio track actually is. I couldn't use this as a bed for my voice or my speaking, so I'm going to have to edit it just a little bit. Now, you want to take this envelope tool, and you want to click anywhere in the center, and then you just want to pull that down to where it's at a comfortable level. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it a little bit here, and I'm going to click play. 51, that lonely place in the desert surrounded by secrecy and guarded by the U.S. government. Start recording, and it'll pick up where you left off. As you can tell, adding that, that one little piece of music really, you know, enhanced that audio a great deal. I want to get rid of this track. Let me delete that. Hey, welcome to the Bearded Guy Podcast. Thanks for coming by today. Now, today we're going to be talking about Area 51, that lonely place in the desert surrounded by secrecy and guarded by the U.S. government. Okay, so now that we've got that recorded, we want to use that first part of the music and the speaking for just the opening. So what you can do is instead of adding another track in here, you can still use that same track. Let's go back to our envelope tool, and I want to pick up the audio right here, and then I want to add another point there, and I'm going to expand that out. And as I fade out in my, in my speaking, what's going to happen is, is this audio is going to gradually increase to use it as the the opening break or the opener for my podcast episode. Look about it in the select tool. And guarded by the U.S. government. Now, I'm happy with that. I like the way that opened up. I'm going to put another point here, and I'm going to bring this audio back down. And then from there, what I can do, let me backtrack just a shade here. Go back to my selection tool. I'm going to go back to my, my original audio track, and I'm coming out of this audio break here, and I'm going to start recording again. That's right, Area 51. Man, if you go there and you get anywhere near the facility, the U.S. government officials are going to escort you off the property, and they will do so by force if you do not willfully leave. So there you go. That's a brief little tutorial about Audacity. It's a really a great program, something that you can use. Something Again, it's free. It's easy to use. Uh, you just have to play around with it and check some of the settings and set things the way you want them to be. So let's jump back into the video and we'll close this out. So there you go, Audacity, great program, easy to use, um, fun to use really, once you get into it and you can really start editing your audio and taking it to different levels. And again, it's, it's, it's free. Do this inexpensively. I can't stress that enough. Do this inexpensively and you'll be happier that you did. And as you grow and as you get better, then move into more expensive equipment or different microphones or different recording gear. Now, of course, everything I'm running through here is not just a basic setup, but again, this is something that I enjoy doing so much and that's why I made some investments into the equipment that I do have. Uh, my pod mic sounds great. I love this pod mic. The only thing about it is you can see it right up here at the top. These are dynamic microphones as well, uh, so you're going to have to give them a little bit of power to make them run. That is an inline preamp that runs off 48 volts phantom power that really brings out this microphone and helps it shine. 
So I hope I've given you some, you know, good information about starting a podcast, about some of the software and hardware that you can use, microphones, equipment, all of that. I hope I've helped you out and I hope that you start your podcast journey and you take that first step. And I really hope that you become the next phenomenon in the world of podcasting. So thank you for coming by today. I really appreciate it. And again, if you like the content that you see here, consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notifications bell and come back and join me, hang out with me. We'll be doing more tutorials and more DIY stuff and we'll be doing more live streams as we go along. And again, I hope you find something here that you do like and I do appreciate you taking the time out of your day just to hang out with me for a little while. So for the Bearded Guy Podcast, it's always my hope that you have a great day, a better day tomorrow and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.